Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at something a little different. We have the Evangelion Unit 1 Awakening version from the movie Evangelion 2.0 You Cannot Advance. It released a few Ava kits at the time the movie came out. I always wanted this one, found it decent price, so I'd pick it up. First thing first, for Gundam builders, this kit makes no friggin' sense. Especially on places like here on the neck. The way it connects into the head and the way certain things work doesn't make a lick of sense till it's done. So just build a thing and you'll worry about it later. Uh, we do have these arms, which is really weird. Uh, they have kind of like a fleshy, rubbery surface on them. And at first I didn't quite understand what the purpose of it was until I realized you don't use a lot of this. You see, we are going to remove the wrist connection that clear plastic piece and the forearm connection. How do you get the forearm connection out? Well, interestingly enough, on the part tree itself, it has this one big giant peg that connects into it, and you just literally hook it in there and yank it out. Which is a really neat use of a peg on a part tree. I kind of got a kick out of that. And it works great. Get that clear thing out. I thought these might be important and be used for something else. No, they're pointless. The whole point is to get all this junk out of there, and it leaves a joint inside the arm. So it looks like one solid piece, but you can still bend it. As so, you can't get a lot of bend out of it, but you can bend it. And it does look kind of fleshy, almost human-ish, or Ava-ish. It's weird. Ava kits are weird. Avas are weird. But anyway, it works. You can't get much of a bend out of it, though. Uh, the shoulder binders, shoulder armor, whatever, will tilt from side to side. It doesn't get in the way at all. A lot of Ava action figure kits, there's always a pain to get in the way. On the other hand, we have the angel arm, or the LCL arm, or whatever in heck it is. Big, giant, glowy arm. Does not bend at all. They give you two different arms, though. But it's semi-clear, has sparkles in it, so he's Captain Sparkle Fingers. Yes, I said that. And everything, I mean, it looks really cool. There's kind of a break where it connects to the arm, but like I said, the arm was sliced off in the movie, so that's where that came from. It just kind of regrew with weird powers. And like I said, they give you a, a arm that's bent. So you can have the straight arm or the bent arm, but it does not move itself. And they give you two different hands as well. The open style hand and more of a, you know, closer hand, closed hand, palm hand, whatever. Now you get them up there. Balance on this thing is wacky. We get the legs up there. Tiny little legs, tiny little feet. The bottom of the feet should be painted white. I didn't bother with that, but if you really want to be a stickler, the bottom of his shoes, slash boots, slash feet, whatever, is white. The torso spine on this thing is absolutely terrifying. The way it all, like, links together, and how skinny it is. Let's just call it what it is. The Ava is and always has been a horror movie villain. The way it's proportioned, the big giant arms, the skinny legs, the weird torso. All Slender Man is, is an Ava wearing formal wear. Let's call it what it is. But Ava's always meant to be look creepy and otherworldly. And this one is. Balance is wonky. Uh, can you get him to stand? Yes. Will he fall over a lot? Yes. Can you get him on the ground it's like he's crawling, like some kind of horrible nightmare creature? Yeah, you can. And yeah, that's that's just... Yeah, that's messed up. Anyway, get them all standing up straight, so straight up and down. It's a lot easier to pose like this, but let's be honest, nobody's going to pose an able like this. He's going to have his spine twisting in some weird mutant way. But he can't stand up just straight. A little size comparison next to the Mark II version 2.0. He's about the size of Master Grade, a tiny bit taller than your average one. Price-wise, he's a little bit cheaper than a Master Grade, but just a little. He's mostly about the same price. And there we have on that. Now, because of that super bright orange, I was curious what would happen if I put a black light on this. Would it light up like Christmas? Oh my god, yes. Um, really, really bright on the orange, which I was expecting, but wow, I didn't, it really does pop. Uh, the clear hand doesn't really glow, but it does kind of have this weird ethereal thing. The eyes are a sticker, 
And uh, those also glow, which is kind of creepy. Inside the mouth is red, and you kind of barely see that peeking through the mouth. That's not painted. The mouth comes with little pieces of red for the inside of the head. And yeah, it's terrifying. Accessories. You get the plug with a wire that goes to nothing. You have all the pieces you need to make the other hand. If you want to use the standard arm and hand, and they give you the standard eyes, you can do that. Why you would want to do that with a bright orange, I don't know, but you can. Uh, they give you a knife that can be put in the uh, shoulder and the shoulder armor. They give you a foldable knife, and they give you a gun. A lot of which needs painting, and they basically all stink. It can hold the gun all right. It can't hold the knife worth a darn. And the thing in the shoulder is also a pain. And getting that plug out is a real pain in the butt. However, they do give you this accessory, which is an angel halo. Somebody's still tweeting me. Anyway, angel halo. That clear piece there. That is the exact same thing they use for the. Strike Freedom Full Burst that held up the Dragoons. As such, when you get it, it's way too long. So you got to cut it down to size. But you can also bend it however you see fit. So you can bend it at just the right angle. You can cut it down to whatever size you want. But the piece they give you is way too big. They also give you a action base attachment. This is the stain standard action base attachment that will go into any action base that you can use for your Gundam. So if you want them airborne, there you go. Like I said, that eliminates all the balance issues. Balance issues. Ba balance. Uh, there we go. Balance issues. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving this kit a thumbs up. I was honestly expecting to have to do a lot more painting on this. You really don't have to do much. I mean, maybe a tiny bit of lining, but that's about it. But in terms of overall painting, you don't got to do squat. Like I said, the head's done for you. If you really want to do this eyes instead of use a sticker, that's it. They give you some... Uh, Dry transfer for the arms, but in this mode, I'm not going to use the dry transfers. It looks better without it, but to each his own. But, yeah, this is a terrifying and creepy little kit, which is exactly what you want out of an Ava kit, just to be a, a little bit wrong. And like I said, Ava's a horror movie villain, just a big giant one in the mech series. But, yeah, good kit. Thumbs up. If you look at this and you go... I don't want that. You don't. If you look at that and you go, oh, that's kind of cool. Pick it up. You'll enjoy it. It's a neat little kit. Plus, like I said, it's really odd in terms of the build. And if you're used to building master grades, this is a nice change of pace. Thumbs up. Good kit. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please ask them. I will answer them as best as I can. Please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, and, uh, one more thing. I want Ray. Give her back. No, that's Ray Charles. That's Ray Romano. Look, fictional Ray. Fictional. That's Ray Stance. That's Raymond Reddington. Look, she's a girl. Fictional girl. Damn it!